All right, so I was a broke middle school teacher making $20,000 a year. Not that there's anything wrong with being a teacher. Teachers are great. I was a teacher. It's a perfectly noble career path, uh, but I had no tech background, no computer science degree, only an English degree. But I was just a guy who felt completely stuck watching his friends climb the career ladder while I could barely afford groceries. I mean, seriously, I had four roommates and I was still barely making ends meet. Fast forward a few years and now I'm a six figure dad data analyst. And here's the thing, you don't need experience to break into data, at least not data experience. You just need the right roadmap. And in this video, I'm walking you through the exact steps that I took to go from zero experience to landing my first data job, including the skills that actually matter, how to build a portfolio that gets you noticed, and the three biggest mistakes people make that keep them stuck. So let's get into it. First is the skills that actually get you hired. So I wanna start by just sharing a little bit about my career journey and kind of what I went through. So I started with Excel because from education, I pivoted into a kind of not so technical analyst role, but we used Excel very heavily. And after a couple of years in that role, I really wanted to be like the go-to Excel person. So that was my launch into online courses. So I started with just a few Excel courses, started implementing that into my work like data dashboards and more advanced formulas and pivot tables. And then after shadowing some business analysts in the company, I began discovering and taking on tools like Power BI and Tableau. I implemented some Power BI reports with my team at the time I was a supervisor. And so I made some just like KPI reports for my team, but I would also make dashboards through Excel for the clients that we were servicing. And eventually through this journey, once I decided I really wanted to get serious about becoming a data analyst, I worked my way into SQL. And each of these skills is a truly crucial piece of becoming a data analyst. So I wanna walk through each one. So I recommend learning Excel because it literally exists everywhere. It's good to know at least the fundamentals like formula logic, pivot tables, and chart creation, because at some point, even if you don't use it a whole lot, you'll probably encounter Excel. You may have heard the meme, all roads lead back to Excel, and it's kind of true. The world runs on Excel, so it's kind of a good thing to know, but it also sets you up for some more complicated languages down the road. The next tool is Power BI or Tableau. So this is understanding the BI layer of analytics, and it's essential knowledge. So this is the front end of report development. And both of these tools are pretty powerful for automation, data modeling, visualization, and more powerful than a tool like Excel. Excel is a pretty sweet like Swiss army knife of data, but Power BI is going to, or Tableau is going to help you uh, go much more heavy into more like data modeling, automation, visualization, like I just mentioned. Now let's talk about SQL. So SQL is probably the most essential data skill. It exists in almost every facet of the data analytics and data science world. SQL is how you retrieve your data from databases. So it's a crucial skill for analysis, data organization, and making connections between your data sources. Because of this, I recommend taking a quality SQL course. One that will not only teach you everything you need to know about SQL, but one that will do so in a comprehensive and easy to understand manner. A great option for this is DataCamp's Associate Data Analyst and SQL Course Track, who also happened to be the sponsor of today's video. I'm a huge fan of DataCamp and I took this track early on in my data career and I only wish that I had discovered it sooner. It lays out beginner to advanced concepts and everything in between in an extremely practical way. And there's lots of practice involved, which is a hallmark of any good course. And I also love DataCamp's built-in SQL IDE as it allows you to get started using SQL without having to spend extra time downloading external tools, things like that. Again, I've been a fan of DataCamp for a long time, ever since I began my data career. And this is a fantastic course. And the last skill I want to cover here is R or Python. So it's helpful to have an understanding of these tools. Each of them are helpful for manipulating, analyzing, and visualizing data in a very flexible way. One thing I will mention is while I don't think either of these is necessarily required for an entry-level role as a data analyst, some roles may require them. And in general, they're helpful for both standing out and advancing your data career. So more crucial for more advanced roles. And if you want to stand out as someone who knows these skills well, then a 
a quality exam-based certification can help you. And I'm not talking about like a course completion certificate. I'm talking about an actual certification. And one of the best that I could recommend is again, DataCamp's Data Analyst Certification. It's an industry recognized certification and these are difficult to come by, but this is one of the best. It's a three-part exam that tests you on core data analyst skills, specifically in SQL and Python or R. There are practice exams and recommended course tracks to help you prepare. And the exams are reviewed by real humans, which honestly is pretty rare nowadays. So having something like this is an excellent way to stand out in a difficult market and it's well worth the effort. So again, like I mentioned, all of these skills are pretty crucial for becoming a data analyst. I didn't even know what SQL was when I first started applying for data jobs. And it wasn't until like I got involved in the LinkedIn community that I truly learned like the skills I needed to have to formally become a data analyst. So next, let's talk about building a portfolio that proves you can do the work. So projects are absolutely crucial to becoming a data analyst, especially if you don't have like a relevant degree like computer science or don't have formal experience in the role. But honestly, even if you do, a portfolio is still pretty crucial. Even for myself, after years of being a data analyst, I've still had to have a portfolio in interviews to get more advanced roles. So honestly, at any stage of your journey, it's pretty crucial to have a portfolio and I highly recommend it. But you don't have to start off with anything super complicated. So my first projects were like an Excel budget tracker, the World Happiness Report built in Tableau. I even had just like a SQL dictionary repository that I put together that were basically notes of what I was learning in SQL, but I still like threw that my portfolio. I don't know how much that helped, but the fact of the matter is just having projects, like throwing something in your portfolio to show you actually know how to use the tools is really helpful. And your portfolio may or may not be a crucial part of your specific journey. Some employers care, some don't. But again, I would recommend you have one just in case, but it's also something that you could draw the conversation to in interviews, even if they don't bring it up. So you can use your projects as a way to talk through your experience and skills. But I want to talk about a client I worked with in my career coaching program named Zach. So Zach was a teacher much like myself, and he wanted to get into data analytics and didn't have a formal degree in it like me. And so we started working together. We started talking, started learning the skills, creating projects. And his turning point was when he started building projects consistently. So eventually he got into this groove where he was very active on LinkedIn. He was creating like a project a week and he was just talking about them openly on LinkedIn. But with the job he ended up getting, his portfolio was a pretty crucial piece of that. So the best thing I could recommend is to build a portfolio and to talk about it. So the next thing I want to talk about is the reality of landing your first job. So I applied to 216 roles before landing my first data job. And by the way, if you're working on your resume right now, I've got a free ATS friendly template that's helped my clients land interviews at top companies. Grab it using the link in the description below. But it's kind of emotional going through the job hunt, especially right now. So I went through a lot of doubt, imposter syndrome, frustration, things like that. I was wondering if it would ever happen. I was feeling not good enough. You know, you just go through rejection after rejection. You have an interview that you think goes well, and then you don't get the job or you have an interview that you bomb and you just feel like you're not cut out for it. These are all totally normal feelings that you will probably feel at some point in the data job hunt if you haven't already. Oh, hey, my dog's back there. Hi, Maki. Again, this is my dog, Maki hanging out with me right now. But when I landed my first job as a data analyst, it was actually a business analyst role. And it was specifically supporting like a billing credit collections department for like a mid-sized company. And where I'd come from before that, the job I had, I was explaining in the first part of the video, my journey was in like a billing kind of role. And I remember after I got hired, I had a conversation with my director and he told me, you know, we interviewed lots of people who were much more technical than you, but the reason that we really liked you and you stood out to us as you had experience in our department. So in like billing credit collections type of thing. And I'll never forget that because it showed me that experience and personality could trump technical ability. Just like most industries, you know, it's not just your capacity to do the job. It's like who you are and your background that helps you stand out. I'll also mention too, just to be transparent, that that first job was a 100% in office job. These tend to be a little less competitive and I knew I could 
couldn't be too picky when I was just starting off. So I was still applying to like fully remote and hybrid roles, but this was one like pretty close by to me that I just applied to because it looked like a good fit, looked like a genuinely good job, but it was in office. And those do tend to have a little bit less applicants. So just kind of a lesson to not be too picky when you're trying to land, especially your first job in data. So the last thing I want to talk about today is the three mistakes that can cost you months. These are mistakes that I've experienced in some capacity, but even more so, I see many other people go through these mistakes. I see it every day on social media and the people I talk to and work with. Uh, so let's go through them. The first mistake is course purgatory. So this is when you go through course after course, not building projects, not making projects. And most of the time I see people stuck in this stage because they're afraid to actually put themselves out out there or put in the work of making your own projects to build a portfolio, start applying and get hired. So I actually view course purgatory as a form of procrastination. Again, just taking course after course without making progress. Most of the time, all you need is one comprehensive course and then you can just get going building projects and learning that way. And then additional courses you take later on are kind of more supplementary, but they're not always exactly essential. So what I recommend, take a comprehensive course, start building some projects projects and move on to the next skill. Mistake number two is not building a network sooner. So if I were you, I would jump on LinkedIn like yesterday. So it's a great way to put yourself out there, start posting, engaging with other people's posts, just kind of start to make friends, build a network, uh, have recruiters you could reach out to, whatever. There's so many things you can do with LinkedIn and a network. And the goal of this video is not to talk through how to build a network necessarily, though I do have other videos on how you can do that, but rather the idea of building a network. And if you just get on LinkedIn or something like that daily and start just in getting involved in the conversation, sending out some messages and getting to know people, this is going to help you a ton. So like Zach, who I mentioned earlier, this was a pretty key piece of him landing a role as well, because he had a lot of conversations on LinkedIn that led to interviews. And then finally, mistake number three, which is losing momentum. So I see a lot of people who start off super gung ho. Uh, they put a lot of time into this process and then and maybe after like facing some rejection or doubt or life just gets busy, they lose momentum and they just kind of like coast for weeks or months at a time. And it's very easy to let this happen again, especially if you're facing like a lot of rejection. This is why I recommend just like setting a daily goal that you stick to no matter what, both for learning and for application. So this could look something like, you know, spending 20 minutes a day on the course that you're going through or the project that you're working on, and then maybe applying to like five jobs or even like one job, you're just showing up for the day, even if you're not doing very much. Over time, that compounds, but more importantly, it keeps you involved in the process and keeps you from completely losing steam. So set daily goals for the things you're trying to achieve. And even if it's not very much each day, something is way better than nothing. And then on the days that you have more time, you can devote a little bit more to it. But I find pretty often that even if you devote a little bit of time, sometimes you'll end up spending more, especially if you're just feeling it. So again, breaking into data with no experience is completely possible. Not easy, but possible. I'm living proof, but it wasn't always this way. There were moments I doubted myself, questioned if I was good enough and almost gave up entirely. But the difference between failure and success wasn't talent. It was persistence and knowing exactly what to focus on. If I was starting over right now, I'd focus on these SQL courses first. And if you want the free resume template, I'm before, grab it using the first link in the description below. It's helped plenty of my subscribers and clients land interviews. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.